Hello visionaries, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Marisa Talbert. I am the founder and CEO of Talbert Law Office, your favorite go-to legal resource for all things business, nonprofit, and intellectual property law. Last video, we discussed 10 tips to help you DIY your business legal audit. One of those tips was making sure that your intellectual property is protected, which includes your website domain name. So who owns the rights? to your website domain name. What would you do if another business or organization was using your business name as their domain name? This has happened a couple of times with some of my clients. For example, one of my clients is a nonprofit organization. We'll call it ABC Foundation. And their domain name was abc.org. Well, another person who was no longer affiliated with the ABC Foundation started their own entity and created a website for that entity. The name of their organization organization was ABC LA chapter and the name of their website domain name was ABC LA chapter.org. Of course, without the permission of ABC Foundation. Another instance I've seen is where two unaffiliated companies have the same or similar business name. And unfortunately for my client, the domain name that they wanted for their website was already taken. There are also instances of cyber squatters. Cyber squatting happens when a person or an entity registers a domain name with no legitimate use, either personal or business. And they have purchased and registered this domain name so that they can extort money from the person person or the business who actually really wants that domain name. So in this video, I want to talk about who owns the rights to a website domain and how to resolve a domain name dispute between your company and another business organization or individual. If you don't know, a corporation known as ICANN or the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers is responsible for allocating IP addresses, managing domain names, and helping to generally maintain security of the internet. When you register a domain name such as abcfoundation.org or Talbert Law Office, you are generally registering that domain with ICANN. So let's talk a little bit about the rights that are associated with that registration. Registration doesn't really give you ownership of that domain name, but it functions like a lease. Similar to how a phone number is attached to your phone. It's practically your domain name, just like it's practically your phone number. But if you ever wanted to change your phone number, you could easily relinquish your current phone number and choose a new one. Kind of the same thing with a domain. It's your domain until you choose to give it up or until you don't renew the registration. And then it's back to the open market for anyone else who wants to use that same domain or that same phone number. When you are the registrant of a domain, you have the rights to control how that domain is used. This is why most often domain name disputes fall under trademark law. The thing to be most aware of when you're registering a domain name is that the registrant information has legal implications. What I mean by that is if you place an individual's name as the registrant, then that individual will have the rights to control the domain name. Even if that individual is just an employee of the company or a virtual assistant or somebody who actually shouldn't have control. The same goes for a company. Whoever you put in that registrant field will be considered the person or the entity that has control over the domain name. So if you want to make sure that you as an individual or your company have the legal control rights over a domain, you need to make sure that your name or your company's name is accurately reflected as the registrant in the records. Now, none of this matters until it does. If you end up having a domain dispute, you don't want to be hindered from a resolution because when you registered the domain, it was done by your virtual assistant who used their name and they no longer work with you. Or you registered the name using your initials and now you can't prove that you're the actual registrant. The point is the registrant name is very important when you are registering for your domain. Whoever is listed as the registrant is the person who has the rights to control. So let's talk about some ways that you can resolve 
resolve the unauthorized use of your domain name. Number one. So the first thing that you can do is send a cease and desist letter to inform the other party that you have a complaint against them for their alleged unauthorized use of the domain name. A cease and desist letter usually won't work, but it does serve as official and legal documentation that this other party was informed of their alleged wrongdoings. So the second option is to file a lawsuit in federal court under the Anti-Cybersquatting Consumer Protection Act the ACPA. The ACPA allows a trademark owner to sue an alleged cyber squatter in federal court and obtain a court order for the domain name to be transferred back to the rightful owner. ACPA also allows for monetary damages if the cyber squatter is found guilty. The cons to the ACPA route is that bringing a lawsuit in federal court not only takes a lot of time, but it can be very, very expensive. And it requires actually knowing who the cyber squatter is in order to serve them the court documents and compel them to come into a courtroom. So option number three, which is probably the most effective option, is to pursue arbitration with ICANN. For anyone who is unfamiliar, arbitration is like a trial, but it's private and it's much more informal and it happens much more quickly than a traditional trial in a court of law. This arbitration that I'm referring to through ICANN is known as the Uniform Domain Name Dispute Resolution Policy or the UDRP. Some advantages to the UDRP over the ACPA is that obviously if you're bringing a case in federal court under the ACPA that has to be done in the United States, but ICANN is international and the UDRP applies worldwide. This means that the person that you want to bring a complaint against does not have to live in the United States and can still be held accountable. As I mentioned, bringing a lawsuit in federal court takes a long time. It could even take years. However, UDRP is expected to be resolved within 60 days days of filing the complaint. Now, this timeline could be expanded, give or take a few weeks. However, this process is going to be much, much shorter than filing a traditional lawsuit. The one thing to know about UDRP is that it is not a free alternative. The cost can range anywhere from $1,500 to $5,000, and that's without lawyer representation. The good thing is, is that if you're not satisfied with the UDRP decision, you still have the option to file a lawsuit lawsuit in federal court. And you can do that either before a decision is made at UDRP or even after a decision is made at UDRP. Now, in order to bring a UDRP complaint to ICANN, you must be able to show one of the following three. That someone is using a domain name that is either identical or confusingly similar to your trademark. That a cyber squatter has registered your domain name with no rights or no legitimate interest in using the domain name. Or that the domain name has been registered and used in bad faith. So if someone has taken part of your business name and is using it against your will without your permission and you want to shut them down, you have three options. Those three options, send a cease and desist letter, file a lawsuit in federal court under the ACPA or the Anti-Cyber Squatting Consumer Protection Act, or file a complaint under the Uniform Domain Name Dispute Resolution Policy known as UDRP with ICANN. Well, I hope this information was helpful. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, this is Talbert Law Office, your favorite go-to legal resource for all things business, nonprofit, and intellectual property law. And I'll see you in the next video. I'm gonna keep it pushing, yeah.